Warning, this game's setting revolves around an active Middle East combat zone and contains references to extreme violence, graphic content, and other mature themes. Listener discretion is advised. The Rancor's Brothel presents... Want some whiskey in your water, sugar in your tea? With all these crazy questions that are asking me, the craziest body that could ever be. So turn on the lights, cause I don't want to see. My little told me not to come. My little told me not to come. That ain't the way to have fun, son. Iconoclast, a campaign of horrors modern and ancient. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Cody. Hi, rest of the table. That's where Jeff Potts can put in the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with these, every once in a while I like doing solo sessions. Uh, in the early days, I think that Matt and I did a solo session that was great. Jeff and I did a solo session where he lost a hand. Um, solo sessions with Daniel, wild business. <laughs> um, but usually about once a campaign, somebody does something. That, that deserves exploration. Um, Jeff has taken us well off the beaten path of Iconoclast. Um, as I've told Jeff already, there's no real spot in here where Glancy's like, in case the players defect to Pisces, here's what you do. You know what I mean? So it's like now there's a moment of discovery. It's a it's a moment in the character's development. It's a moment in the player's development. It's a moment in the game. So I can feel Schroeder glaring at me from here. <laughs> He's going to be so mad. Like he was so mad. But I think it's important to explore. And like, I don't know what this will turn out to the audience, but like some of it is interact interacting like, you know, game master and player. Some of it's going to be character stuff because none of us are really quite sure where it goes from here. But big decisions deserve credit. They deserve story time. You know what I mean? So. This is our chance to kind of explore. Um, So we talked about a few things. I read up uh, some more stuff on Pisces, um, kind of their motivations, told Jeff to think about his motivations and just kind of have a chat of figuring out what's going on. So some of this may retcon what we've already heard. We'll see what Jeff and I we'll see what Jeff and I decide over the next little bit. But anyway, you were starting by asking me a very poignant question from your character sheet. Well, I've I've actually come up with a with a few, but the, the big one is. Under wounds and ailments on Hastings character sheet, it says an especially traumatic period of research for Delta Green increased your unnatural and occult skill and resulted in your depersonalization disorder. And what are your skills at? Uh, Unnatural is 10 percent. Okay. Occult is 80. So and what's she's in archaeology, right? Yes. So. What that reads to me, and this is not this is not me as a handler saying what it has to be, but what that reads to me. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, there's there's archaeology, but it's also she, she's actually not that high in archaeology. It's all near Eastern studies, near Eastern studies. Interesting. Uh, let me look at something. Let me see. I have a copy of her character sheet as well, so I'm not looking at anything that you don't have. I'm just mm-hmm. trying to see what you're seeing, too. Um. She has done consulting for the CIA and the State Department. Yeah. And then worked with Delta Green. But that work led you to helping Delta Green investigate secrets so profound, ancient, and terrifyingly dangerous that they have begun to reshape your view of the world. You can't tell what shape that view will eventually take. Okay. So let's let's try and storyline this, right? So her her languages are all Akkadian, Aramaic, Arabic, Hebrew, Sumerian. Yep. So it's all going to be Middle East type stuff, right? Forty in archaeology. Um, what else are you you big in? Eighty in history, right? Yep. So like legitimately, her two biggest things are history and a cult. So probably we need to be talking about things like ancient Sumer. Uh, Spencer, uh, if you ever listened to this Anunnaki, um, just sent him an hour long bullshit video on the Anunnaki the other day. And uh, we were trading dumb quotes from it. Um, 
But yeah, I think something something Middle East. Okay, let's also take into account your age. So you're 45. Correct. How long you've been around long enough that that one of your bonds was a DG agent, which is sort of what set this all off. Yes. And you have a depersonalization disorder. So how long do you think you've been with the program? I would say 10 to 15 years. Okay, so what's interesting about that is if we go to that time frame, right, if we pull, peel back a little bit on the program, 9-11 is really the birth of the modern program for Delta Green. Right. So a whole lot of shit in Delta Green's history, which again, I put air quotes around that because in the handler's guide, um, they basically kind of say, here's our history, but, you know, do whatever the fuck you want with it, you know, make it your game. Um, but, it, you know, if it's because it is, what is it in the game, 2015, 2016? 2016. Yeah. So, yeah, that puts you right around being there from the beginning. Right. Um, well, and I, I established that her bond w- had dealt with the Cowboys. Right. So maybe that's somewhere where we need to go character wise. Um, or at least had come in out of the cold. Right. Because there was an opportunity for them all to come in out of the cold. So maybe she's one of the first ones to kind of come in from the cold or, or be she, brought in by somebody. Or she was one of the friendlies who was brought into the program. OK. Yeah, we could explore that. Um, so I guess the question is like what. So it's interesting is, is she's got all this history. She's got all this archaeology. She's got this occult. But her. It's not like she knows what she's looking at, right? Her unnatural isn't very high. So you have to go through some shit to get 10% in unnatural. You do. I'm not saying, but I'm saying that you have to lose 10 points of sand to get it. But what I'm saying, right. But what I'm saying is, is you saw something horrific and profound, but you don't know. It's not like you know how to cast spells from it. Yes. Yes. So whatever happened, she has has an idea of the theory. Correct. (laughs) So I guess the question then becomes, what kind of, like, where did this put DG? Where did this put her? And that's probably where we want to sort of talk about it. Would it have been early or recent that this has happened? What? So she's been with the program 10 to 15 years, Mm -hmm. and they've been looking into uh, hypergeometric entities and stuff, right? But this event that, that spawned this 10 and unnatural, is that new or is that old? I think that would probably be old. So this is weight she's been carrying around for a decade or more. Yeah. Okay. Because from from the way the program has treated us, I don't think that they would have dumped her into something like this and let her walk away from it. Okay. That's uh, okay. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, or she completely kept something from the program. I'm not sure. Right. Maybe she saw something and kept something from them. But I guess what I'm saying is, is when this unnatural occurred, did it happen early on in her DG career or yeah, did it I'd happen? Say, I'd okay. say early on. So this is something that's been festering for a while. And mm-hmm. maybe that's some of what provoked her. Um, maybe some of that's what what provoked her. You know what I mean? Like it's it's been sitting under the surface for her forever. Um, I don't want to give away too much. We won't just sit in here and just take a whole bunch of stuff as I sit here and flip through this. You should get a copy of this book and read some of it, though. You will enjoy the shit out of it. It's on my list. Um, that's that is, is this, the handler's guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is she, is this her first time in Iraq? No, no. Would she have been here in any of the previous incursions? Like, would she have been here for the, would she have been here for the original Iraq war? I mean, I, what was that? 2003? Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, it's, uh, it says that she did work for the state department and everything and the CIA. There's a section in here on the Iraq war. So I was looking to see if we can find some, some stuff there. Gotcha. Because it says the program was, was not yet six months old when the war began. So yeah, I think that there's, I think that there's something there. Yeah, there's some history here where <laughs> so DG um, DG agents were it says were some first on the ground taking advantage of the chaos to raid holy sites, museums, art galleries, and homes. Provided welcome infusion funding when diverted by outlaw agents. Also taught the leaders. Um, so I don't feel like I'm giving much away here because I think that all they're doing here is summarizing the Iraq War. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. Um, but it it says it proved the dangers of ch- cherry picking intelligence reports to suit an objective rather than crafting obje- objectives around intelligence. It taught them to be aware of the arrogance of decisions made on faith rather than facts and of the temptation to achieve immediate success at the risk of long term disaster. It also thoroughly confirmed the program's decision to keep political leaders and government bu- bureaucracy at arm's length. So it's entirely possible that you have the breakout of the war, DG, both in outlaw and program 
platform end up on the ground and maybe that's where you're called in as a friendly they bring something back to the u.s it says they raid all different kinds of sites and yeah. bring stuff back they've got to have somebody who knows something about it right um uh and it and it talks about how the Iraq War teaches the program about compartmentalization, um, discrediting the truth, um, and to pursue its mission without discovery, impeded only by self-imposed limitations. And at this time, the outlaws were working with them, so it's entirely possible that your contact. What do we call your contact's name again? Miles Worthington. That's right. So you know, it could be that Miles. That could be interesting. Miles was brought. In, something was found. Miles was brought in. You were brought in, both to sort of consult. And maybe you and Miles are the only ones that got out of there. Yeah. And you covered for each other. And it's just been eating away at you for the last 12, 15 years. Twelve, It'd be like 12 years. And now knowing that you killed Miles after he protected you and you worked together, that's what sets Susan off. Yeah, I like it. So with that, do we need to develop more into what you two did and or found? I mean, not necessarily. I was just thinking about what she might have to offer Pisces. Okay. Experience is definitely, you know, that that that's definitely something that she can offer. I think for game purposes, we have to come up with with more tangible things. Yeah. But yes, I think that that's definitely up there. Okay. Um. Yeah, if we need to develop that more, we could. But I'm going to assume that there's some sort of like... <laughs> You were brought in as a friendly. It was a shotgun scenario, and only you and Miles <laughs> walked out. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe maybe Miles put a shotgun to the base of somebody's possessed bur- head. You know, maybe fucking Grays showed up. Like, you heard buzzing and things. You saw something rend its own flesh and d- d- warp bodies inside out. You saw something temporal. Who knows? We can get into it more if we need to. But I feel like that gives Susan a motivation for now that now that she's seen that even stepping a toe out of line, they threw him in the river. Gives her a little bit more motivation. Yeah. Okay. What other questions do you have? What else do we want to explore? You know, I know I had another question. I don't remember what it is. (laughs) We'll figure it out. No, you're good. Mm -hmm. Um... So I guess, uh, and I don't remember, I may have name dropped uh, the individual. Did I name drop your contact? I feel like Simon was what I would have said, but I don't know if that's the case or not. My contact. Your your new contact in Pisces, the person debriefing you. No, you did not drop a name to my knowledge. Okay, we're going to go with Simon from now on. Okay. Uh, just because I just think of... Um, uh, What's his What's his face from uh, um, Die Hard 3? Simple Simon led the pieman. Um <laughs> I don't know why that comes to mind, but it does. So we'll go with uh, Simon is the well-dressed man. So you've been kidnapped, dragged to some facility, shoved in an MRI. Hastings only calls him Steed. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Mm, I do like Steed. (laughs) Steed is a good one. I was thinking about doing something really arrogant like Snodgrass, and I'm like, it's, it's a little... You took Worthington, which is an excellent name. But yeah, I feel like he would go something very, very basic. Like, not M-level basic, but pretty basic. And Simon is... Yeah. Um, so anyway, you've been shoved in an MRI, brain scanned, yanked out, and then Simon wants to sit down for a chat over tea. Because now it's morning, you've been up half the night, no sleep, and now we're just continuing with the psychological torture of, like, you know, being held at knife point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thrown basically into a car, drugged around, tossed in an MRI machine um, that definitely didn't cause like any long term uh, health issues. Um, Meh. <laughs> I mean, at least she didn't have any pins in her leg or anything. How <laughs> fucking funny with it. Shake! Ah! <laughs> well, we've cleared your brain. Uh, also caused multiple puncture wounds uh, in Third your Third degree legs. burns to, your le- to the inside of your legs. Um... So he's going to sit down for tea and just sort of just sort of very in a, in a ridiculously casual over breakfast over fucking um, what do you call those? Um, uh, I mean, he's got oh, I wish my brain functioned. It, it's I laid picture out. I'm sitting there tapping a, a neg cup. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like that's 100 percent what he, he's got, like a cloth napkin laid out on his lap. Um, he's brought coffee, but just for you. Mm-hmm. Like it's you know, it's very like traditional English breakfast, but very like highfalutin. Like it's it's quite nice. And like you're you're drug off to a room that is nicely appointed, even though you appear to be in nondescript military slash hospital facility. Like the corridors are all like blank stark white, like blinking luminescent lights. Oh, I, I I wondered if it was going to be an actual functioning facility or if this was going to be like old defunct. 
It appears to be old defunct until you like turn the corner and you open it up and there's this like lushly appointed like dining area. Okay. Um, and like it, it probably overlooks like you're not like quite having breakfast on the lawn, but there are like, it's, it's a well-appointed room, um, probably carpet, um, a couple of nice pieces of furniture, not quite art on the walls, but like upscale. Um, and like, uh, I always think about the stark contrast, uh, you're playing any of the resident evil games. Yeah. Like the stark contrast where like you had the well-appointed and then all of a sudden it descended into like the, un- like, just like that. You just came upstairs and like, Oh look, the sun's coming up and the birds are chirping and there's the forest and the rolling hills. Like, <laughs> but you are miles from fuck all anybody. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you have to kind of wonder as he sits you down and they bring food. If that's part of the point that he sort of, you're sort of sat there, the Vista, you being able to look at the Vista and sort of talk to each other and uh, so uh, Dr. Hastings um, let's chat what would you uh, what brings you uh, to our lovely abode you did fair point (laughs) why why do you want to defect because I'm pretty sure that once I go back I'm I'm gonna be taken out before I can do anything she will go into the the whole story with Worthington. Um, I mean, Worthington was from Britain. Right. I don't. I don't know that he, he that he might have had any connection with Pisces or anything. But um, he will. He will nod, and he sort of surreptitiously has a you know. He, he you you see like a napkin move or something and he's got sort of something that he's either typing into or I don't know if he would be a steno pad guy but like there's something that he's sort of like taking a note and then we'll go back to his tea and then take a note and go back to his tea you see a, a brief like double take when you mention miles but you don't get you don't see like if there's any sort of signs of recognition you're not getting it off of that sort of a conversation uh-huh. so you go through all the spiel of, of miles being dead and then that's kind of what brought you here yeah uh, so my dear do you and do you think that you will walk out of um, our facility alive? He sort of takes a nice sip of his tea to fill the air, fill I'm, the silence. I mean, when you've got 50 50 odds and and zero on the other, I mean, fair enough. Um, well, my dear, um, I'm here for a very particular reason. There are those in our group who believe your 50 50 proposition should land on heads. There are those who believe it should be tails. I am, I'm here to flip the coin, not to be too drastic about it, but since you've already so beautifully described the stakes, mm-hmm. your, your death could be less trouble than your defection. <laughs> so if, uh, 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 how is the coffee, by the way? Would you like some sugar? Uh, I'm, I had, I'm good. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, I hope you enjoy it because I, I'd prefer it not have to be your last cup. Me too, oddly. So... Presuming you're not a mole, um, presuming you're not doing this on behalf of your government, presuming you're doing this of sound mind and body, uh, let's sort of, what's the, what's the American phrase? Lay your cards on the table and let's see which way the coin flips. So what can you tell me about the program? And at this point, he's just going to ask you questions and see where you go. So if you want to narrate it or if you want to role play it, he's literally going to debrief you for every bit of information you would possibly give. Uh, She would start back with the initial operation with Miles, where they were the only two to walk out. Okay. And Miles coming in out of the cold and her being brought in from a friendly to an agent in the program. Sure. uh, She would go through her consulting with the State Department and the CIA. Um, she would give, she'd give her handler. Um, and when you, are you giving up names? Are you giving up? No, no. uh, Colonel Gwen. Okay. So you're giving up, you're giving up Gwen and everything. Fuck that guy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, you actually, uh. As you begin to talk, you see him sort of you see him sort of hand wave because they're they're sort of, you know, some some folks around and you can uh, it's cinematic as fuck, even though it doesn't make any sense. But I love the idea that some somebody somewhere hits hits a hits a button on an old real tape recorder. It begins recording everything that you're saying, because at this point he stopped taking like except for the occasional note. Mm-hmm. He's mostly intently watching you. Oh, like, yeah. This yeah. is a this, this is, is somebody with an 80 in human. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yes. This is someone who is reading the fuck out of everything you're saying because he doesn't ask for any details hardly at all but you you do feel that sort he's of the just comfort- gonna keep letting me talk as long as i'm 
Yeah, going to. And I mean, she she knows that she is <sighs> ass deep in this. She's she is all car all cards on the table. She's, okay. So you lay out everything uh, up to you. You've given up Gwent. So basically, you've laid out everything that you know about the program up until up till your your current team and your current mission. She's got a forty five in bureaucracy. She know that's as much as she knows about the program. Sure. No. Uh, Hmm, yes. Um, yes, I think several of the folks will be very appreciative of that information. And what brings you to jolly old England and London and the British Museum specifically? What do you know about the winds unknown to a dog? Um, let's consider I don't know anything. Please educate me, Dr. Hastings. Um, well, uh, actually, do you, do you have any dealing or have you had any dealings with Tariq Muhammad Rassam? Uh, given my role at this juncture, please enlighten me as if I do not. Yeah. Um, Rassam was an, was an asset of Delta Green. Uh, he had something, he had something stored in a vault under his home in Iraq, they came and they raided his house, killed him, and let loose whatever this thing is. We have gone back to Rassam's. We took his research. We took his tablets um, that go along with what you have here in the museum for the Winds Unknown to Adad. And we're trying to piece together what he what he didn't have, what he didn't know about this thing. And we're trying to stop it. Okay. And I, again, you're going into complete disclosure of everything. So if yeah. he asks you about the team, you're telling him who who your teammates are. You're telling him. I mean, he knows who Kasim is. Right. Um, yeah, I'm I'm assuming that he has some idea of what's going on because they would have been briefed from us coming in. But well, yeah, no, they would. Well, I guess that's the thing. You you presume what happened between the program and Pisces. True. <laughs> but again, he's just going to play. He's going to plead ignorance at any question you ask him and just basically try and force you to fully disclose as much as possible. So, like, are you going to name each one of your associates on the team? Are you going to name every action that you guys have done? Are you going to talk about in detail everything that you've, that I, you've acquired? I will not name drop the team unless pressed. OK, fair enough. Um, I will go into detail about all of our actions and things like that. Uh, tell him about the cult of Shagash that we've been able to research from what we have of the winds of Nando Adad. Um, whatever Kazim got from the Nicotica, I don't, I don't Nicotic manuscripts. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what he got from there, but I'll detail that. Um, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. And right now there is some kind of an entity leaving flayed bodies and inciting some kind of cult in Iraq or in Mosul. And how does the... How, how, how is this cult propagating? We don't know. Okay. As I understand it, the team was inserting at least a few people into Mosul while I was here. Okay. That was the last check in I had. Hmm. All right. And um, this, uh, you, uh, and do you describe to him all the tablets and everything that, that you guys took, You that you have Winds Unknown to Adad, that you have Rassam's notes, that you have? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he didn't bring any of my stuff with me. No. No. Because I'd have had I'd have had my laptop and everything like that. I could have shown him the digital files, but uh, do you let him know that? Yeah. Mm. Um, Whatever research I have, you have full access to. He so, he sort of waves a hand, and you see again someone sort of nods and steps out of the room. And by this point, you've been talking for hours. They keep replenishing the food. That you know they they, they pick up the food. Tea and cakes are brought. Like they're you know mm -hmm. water is brought. Well, Doctor Hastings, I must say of the of the times that I've had to have these sort of interactions, uh, you're doing quite well. I appreciate <laughs> it. Is there something specific that y'all are looking for? It's not really my department to determine. Um, you have talked about a handler. Um, we don't quite function in the same sort of terrorist cells and um, information that um, as I the Americans do. As I understand, they gave that part up. Good to know. Um, but yes, we have not had many interactions with the program in quite some time. I believe I mentioned where the last agent of your organization left uh, about a dozen bodies dead. About when was that? How far back was it? Uh, I have to look like 98. 98? So that's, 98, that's actually before the program. Correct. Which is a distinction you realize he's not really making. What you are considering the program and the outlaws, you're not 100% sure that he makes that distinction. Well, and... It's the Americans. Yes. No, I, I understand that. <laughs> 
but that that is something that she would specifically try and sort this is this is the protocol that they're using now it, he nods mm-hmm. he he's not going to you could tell like i said he's not simon is not giving you anything one way or the other right you know what i mean he's just accepting of what you're saying Sorry, I was going to Google something real quick. Finding certain things in this book is fine, but it's full of references where sometimes a, a, a simple Google search is so much like just searching the PDF is like amazing. I want to double check something and make sure that 90s I gave you is not incorrect. Pisces is mentioned a lot. Well, they do a really good job of like sh- sharing this sort of same information over and over and over in different places. So you can run across it as you're reading in different places, which I think is is clever. Uh, 24th, July, 1998. OK, so, yes, that would have been the outlaws and not the program. Um, he looks at you very closely when he talks about uh, talks about the the what he calls the embassy row massacre to see if there's any recognition on your face or if you say anything whatsoever. No, she I, I assume that she. She doesn't know anything about it. No, not from your time in Delta Green. Okay. They they would not the program would not acknowledge other groups being out there because who could you defect to if the only person that's looking into this is your own program? Right. But Simon does sort of explain that since that essentially the way he he describes it is that um, some American outlaws, as you call them, uh, came over and murdered uh, several Pisces operatives in cold blood. I guess the term is cowboys, isn't it? Which is it? Uh, I see the outlaws in the book quite a bit, but I do know early on they talked about it being cowboys. So, okay, I couldn't remember. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, I'll allow you a human roll. Missed it by three. There's something there, but you're not sure what. Mm -hmm. Um, Something as he's explaining the the massacre. It's you get that it's poignant and that there's something that he's being left unsaid. But whatever it is, it's something deeper than what he's implying. Yeah. Some American spooks shot some British spooks and that caused some tension. But there's there's more there. Uh, A successful role. You might have been able to connect some dots, but you're not able to. Don't forget to take it. You can roll it at the end of this session. Um, That's one that I haven't had go up yet. (laughs) Um, hmm, Good, good. Very good. And given that the coin lands um, and you are able to walk out of this place, um, what would you do? What are your thoughts? What are your plans? Where do you want to go next? What do you want from us? I mean, I'd be happy to work as an asset for you just like I do for the program. Seems like Britain's as deep in Iraq as everybody else is. I could be an asset for that. Uh, Pisces, uh, Pisces involvement is a little bit different than the, than the Americans. We are not, uh, quite the world police, but you do have a point. I think that that would be, that is definitely, um, consideration to take to my superiors. Well, see, that's, that's part of my problem is I don't know what you, what Pisces purview and main goal is as compared to the program. I'm not sure what I can offer you. Fair enough. I will. That says more than you might think. (laughs) They really do keep you poor. Poor bastards in the dark, don't they? <laughs> Just like mushrooms. <laughs> As he has sat here and not revealed anything for the last three hours while you talked. Oh, right. Yeah, I know. Um, well, well, and she's not upset about that because she mm. is. She's the one coming to them for help. Sure. Let me look at a few things. Uh, I think that at this point, uh, he will sort of stand and excuse himself. Um, uh, do you have a particular? Uh, taste for lamb uh, dr hastings i am a fan yeah uh they'll be bringing in a uh, lunch shortly um should you need uh the facilities he kind of indicates that there's clearly like a you wouldn't call it a, a private bathroom by like there, there's a place where you could step out to the side and you know there's a the wc is over there um uh i'll be back shortly okay and you see he takes his little notebook and steps off you do see that uh one of the waiters that is nearby uh, is female. And should you step out to head towards the uh, yeah. the lavatory, she does follow you semi-discreetly, but follows you mm-hmm. um, just to see what's going on. And Hastings would not like, not like overtly, but would try and make small talk as she's going by. See if there's any kind of reaction. Uh, I guess it depends. What What is the small talk? Um, you know, I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. <laughs> kind of a just between us girls type convert, real short conversation. 
Yeah, you don't get the sense that that is quite an angle that it's not a bad, it's not a bad angle, but you, it, it, I don't think it lands the way you want it to. Well, no, she's not, she's, she's not really going for anything. She's trying to gauge. Okay. Based on the reaction of the person. Are they just stone cold? No uh, reaction. Are they, what is, are they genial? Are they, what is it? What is it? That would be what human? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and see if you, what you can read off of her. Nope. Pretty fucking stone cold. Okay. This is the reading that you're going to get. Right or wrong. It, uh, I want to look at this. No, it's not good. Our room is just stuck somewhere in another place. Thoughts so far, Jeff? I'm still, I'm, I'm honestly still trying to decide her Hastings motivations. Like, would she, would she completely abandon her family? I'm going to be it, a sand roll. No, I already made it. <laughs> well, I feel like it's another sand roll to abandon your family. No, that's what I mean. I, I rolled it even when you didn't ask for it. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, like would, would she, tr- she can't, she won't, she, she would not have told them, Hey, I'm an agent in the program. Something may happen and you need to bail when I tell you to bail. They, that dissociative disorder might come into play too. You, yeah. Just maybe, being able maybe to, when she's, remo- home, she's home. What do you mean? Like, oh, I get what you mean. That the stuff she does for the program isn't even there when she's home. Right. That's the only way that she's able to, like, to survive. Like, you've been gone for a while, but have you even bothered to call your family? No. You know what I mean? Like, is it almost like mom's going out on a bender? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'll let you play with that a little bit. Yeah, we haven't really even touched on any of that uh, for any of the characters. Um Nobody's really bought up, as far as I remember, like really pushing off things onto bonds at all. If people had been pushing more stuff onto bonds, then I feel like phone calls from home should be coming through or at least angry emails and phone calls of missed birthdays or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Okay. Um, after at this point, you have nothing other than, you know, sitting out and watching the sun as it slowly creeps across a dismal Southern England sky. Um, food is brought so you can eat if you're hungry. Um, Oh yeah. Hastings would eat it like it is her last meal. (laughs) She's going to enjoy it. Whatever comes. Are you you adapted to helplessness? Yes, actually she is. Okay. There we go. Um, they, uh, um, uh, Simon comes back in. And someone's following him uh, holding a computer, a laptop. It's not yours. Okay. Um, He sort of indicates and the guy comes over and says uh, he opens up the laptop and boots it on and spins it around to you. And you can see that he has um, remotely accessed your computer. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the the technical aspects, Dr. Hastings, but um, uh, our folks here have connected to you to your own laptop, if you would mind. (laughs) I just love, doesn't even doesn't, doesn't even pull, has, it, pull it over. Just reaches over and taps in the password. Board. Schroeder is definitely <laughs> staring at you. Because this thing we haven't talked about this. Rabini hasn't really said anything. But is any of this saved or compartmentalized at all? Or are all these assets just like on Dropbox? You know what I mean? You have all these pictures. You have video. No, I'd have had copies. Okay. Her her stuff would be her stuff going with her, not connected to them. Okay. It's not like they're pulling from one shared drive. It's I'm just asking. I don't know what you guys did with it. I mean, you have you have, you have photos of tablets, you mm-hmm. probably have translations of journals. Like, are you guys sharing and compiling notes somewhere on what's going on in Baghdad? No, because that that would be that would blow OPSEC to shit. Agreed. That doesn't mean that, that you guys aren't doing no. it, but <laughs> like, <laughs> agreed. No, um, I think translating dangerous material right down the street from the Baghdad Museum is blowing OPSEC. But what do I know? Well, yeah, but um, no, there there wouldn't be any direct connection to what they're doing back there. She would have her notes. She would have what she's doing. So photographic evidence you took from Rassam's, mm. probably the video. Yes. Um, and he basically is, you know, is your tip tapping away. He's kind of like, hey, drag this in so we she can take would, a look at it. She would point to an icon on the desktop. Don't click on that. That's Rabini's or that's our tech guy's. Um, he built it to kill the the computer if I needed to. Mm, Yeah. Do not open porn file kind of a thing. Yeah. (laughs) 
it just explodes hentai at you with loud metal music as it melts the hard drive. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, no, they, they sort of instruct you and the guy, once, once you start, once you open it up, the guy begins moving some files and ah, that was the lamb delicious. Yeah. And he, he sat down another plate is, is brought over for him. Uh, Al Rabini, that's really the, the, the first time you've talked about your team. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you really want to know who they are, that's fine. Uh, I don't necessarily have detailed information on them. But is there a reason why you are so hesitant to talk about your team? It's not even that I'm hesitant. I if I don't have to burn them, I won't. But if you want it, man, um, I appreciate your uh, connection to your team. I believe that uh, it's just their name should suffice. Yeah, she'll list them. He sort of jots it down in a notebook. Mm hmm. Um, he, uh, she, she will, as he's jotting them down, they're good people. Noted. Uh, contrary to your home group, uh, we're not here to burn our assets. It's not something we relish doing or do out of the nature of the structure of the group. Um, as somebody who's waiting here for a coin flip, I'm not sure. <laughs> You see, he gets sort of a bemused smile. Fair point. Fair point. I will let you know that um, if you're seeing this as a as a set of tests to pass, you got to the lamb. Uh, I took some of your um, some of my notes and went back and verified um, a decent bit of information um, about you, about what you said. Uh, we're still confirming some of the other details, but I appreciate your open honesty. And she'll tap on the computer and turn it towards him. This is what we're doing in in <laughs> in, 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 in Mosul, and show him the video. <laughs> <laughs> Roll sand, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fair, it's a fair thing to do. Although I bet, yeah, no. I, what's it good? I don't want to keep hammering you on the same thing over and over and over again. But it's almost like a. I feel like it's all human. Got right that? Now. They don't know, but because you turn it around, there might be a, a waiter behind. None of them bat a fucking eye. Nice. They just hmm. like he, he sort of tuts and like continues to sip his tea as like people are fucking massacred in this video and like eldritch horrors and body like they he fuck all. You just see him. He, he makes a couple of notes and signals a guy over and whispers in his ear. And uh, yes, yes. Get that to the team again. Thank you, Dr. Hastings, for your honesty. Um, appreciate the, the film it is. uh I can see why the Americans are worried about that. Yeah, it is legitimately something that needs dealt with. Agreed. I believe in that all parties are aligned. Mm -hmm. What did you say happened to Rassam's property? Well, it was held by ISIL. Uh, there was almost 30, 30 jihadis in there. Um, we dug them out and took what we could. Uh, we surveilled the place remotely uh, once uh, once people showed up, we were able to identify, uh, what's his name, Al Jabiri, mm -hmm. and fed that intel to a CIA contact, and they they airstruck airstrike the place, trying to take him out. Hmm. As we understand it, the the vault is intact; hmm. it's just buried. Uh, the The throne of blood is still in there, sealed. Because you guys did, you guys did excavate it, didn't you? No. We did not. We saw that it was it was buried, and we decided to leave it that way. Mm. So all the stuff in the vault happened at the time of the assault. There was no second return. No, there there was just to find out that it right, was buried. Right, but all the everything that you took because you guys left a lot of shit that's buried in there now. Yes. Okay. Mm. Excellent, Doctor Hastings. Um, she would make sure to tell her tell him what she saw when she looked into the throne of blood. Uh, are you reinforcing that now, or are you saying that are you is that something you did in the past, or something you're doing now? I guess is what I does that make uh, sense? It when she had uh Earlier. detailed what was go, what was in Rassam's vault okay. that she would have made sure to express that. Okay, like the coffee cup shook a little. <laughs> 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 rattled on the on the saucer as she described it um thank you uh thank you for your information um the coin is still in the air but um based on what you've told me based on what you've shared uh, i think it would behoove you and us if you were to return to london and um continue your work um you've provided a bevy of new information that i think uh oh, what the fuck's her name uh i want to call her susan but you're susan it's Emmeline, Emmeline something. Yeah, it's about Hale. Hale. Emmeline Hale. 
I believe that you should consider continue your studies uh, with Dr. Hale with this new information that you've provided. We may need to keep a separate timeline for you, Jeff, just so we kind of see what happens. Yeah. 514 is the date that you just defected. So 514 is, you could call that the MRI scan and the interview or whatever you want to do. Defection day one. <laughs> So they basically take you back. Okay. Like it's it's afternoon evening time and they take you of of the 14th and they take you back to the hotel. You have access to your laptop. You're in your room. It's evening time. Is there anything in particular you'd like to do? Actually, before she leaves, as he's telling her this, she'll very clearly lay out. Am I supposed to contact my team? Um. We would like you to continue to do whatever it is you're expected to do. Expected by the program. Yes. Okay. Please continue to be an excellent American asset. <laughs> okay. From there, see what happens. And so, yeah, they, they take you back. Okay. What's, uh, they actually don't blindfold you for as long as before. Like, they actually, like, I don't know how, I think it's called, I'm going to get my geography wrong, but I know that, like, it's either, I think it's southwest of London. There's, like, a very, there's a very rural district. I want to say it's the Lake District, but I don't know if that's accurate or not. <laughs> like, you get the sense that you didn't actually get all that far out of London. Some of the driving was clearly meant to confuse you. Now, you clearly were on some sort of government land or something that people couldn't easily get on. Um, but clearly they make some turns and like 10 minutes later, they've ripped the hood off and you're on the you're on the M5 motorway or whatever and you're 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 back in London incredibly quickly. Right. And they basically just they pull you in um the the car pulls in underneath and um Simon indicates the door. Have a good evening, Dr. Hastings. Thank you. Am I back at the at the hotel where yeah. Hale is? Uh did you guys stay in the same hotel or do you say a I felt like you I stayed honestly, a I honestly can't remember. I don't think you guys were in the same hotel. Uh she would take her computer she would go and get her computer and go see Hale. Sure. Um you like n knock on the door or whatever. Whatever. It's yep. it's evening. Uh, she opens the door and she's like, "My dear, my poor, poor." She like she like pulls you into the room and closes the door. Uh huh. I'm I'm very pleased to see you, my dear. I didn't think we have work to do. She looks at you with a raised eyebrow as if she's not sure what definition of work you're using. Uh, ha uh, Hastings will pop open the laptop and start flipping through every image that she has. It's. Additional resources have been provided for us. They're no longer being kept from you. They haven't been for a number of hours. Um, we're probably fine here. Probably. But the British Museum is a... It's a secure place. Okay. You and I will no longer be working on this alone. <laughs> okay. I don't yet know what you have, but I can tell you, dear, they want it. They want my research? I am... My importance Or they to want the quarry... My importance to this to to our mutual friends is not how how do you say I'm not even on their radar below your pay grade far 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 above my pay grade or yeah you're below yeah you know what I mean <laughs> you should get some sleep I will see you in the lobby for breakfast yeah um, the team will be here half eight perhaps I'll meet you half seven for breakfast sounds good. Um, you go back to your room in the other hotel. Mm -hmm. Do you do anything in particular? She probably crashes. Uh, yeah, no, you're fucking exhausted. I'm just curious if there's anything in particular. At this point, anybody with any bit of spycraft is going to know your room's probably bugged. Mm -hmm. You know, you're... You're stuck again. Helplessness rolls all over the place, but you ain't got to worry about that. Uh, she will call it. She will call in to the team. Uh, confirm that Kazim made it back. Um, let her let them know that research is continuing. She will check in as scheduled. OK, uh, so you might want to write that down that you made the you made a phone call on the evening of May 14th, um, which, by the way, it's actually a couple days later. So what? I have Kazim goes to Baghdad on the 12th. So it's the evening of the 14th. So we sure as shit would have been there by now. Oh, okay. Just making sure you understand the timeline before we get people fucked up. You wouldn't necessarily call in to check in on that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. No, but I mean, there is like a normal check in. Probably. Yeah. I mean, you guys have never established it. So no. Um, You get up, you do wake up. There are no men with knives or guns waking you up. Bodes well for the day. <laughs> Shower. Yeah. Have breakfast with Hale. Yep. She says, she says nothing. Like she is the epitome of British poise. She talks about the weather. She like, she mentions fuck all about the research and seems to have no intent to tell you. Yeah. Um, I'll ask her for, 
things to do around town. Ah, uh, yes. No, I believe that, uh, you know, if you've not quite seen Wicked on the West End, it's, it's quite good. Been there for a long time, of course. Lion King, excellent. Um, the Noel Coward is actually putting on a, a series of, and she will. Yeah. Like, there's strained tension in her voice, but you get the sense that they know, like... She knows this is a potential spot that as much as they say DG's not here, you don't think that, that at least Hale is confident that they're not. Um, walk across to the museum just like before, but where before you had like gone a particular way to get to the restricted collection. Yeah. She like steps in and is met by a librarian who begins speaking to her and you take like a hard left to an elevator that's like you hadn't seen before. Um, and yeah, now you descend into like an incredibly private and restricted sector of the British Museum. Uh-huh. Um, there's like a cabinet room and there are like six other individuals in that room. Um, Hale says, uh, good morning, all. Thank you all for being here. Um, obviously, we have tea. Um, uh, Dr. Hastings here um, has provided um, some works that we're going to be working on in translation for the group. Um, it is of the utmost interest um, to our associates that we complete this as quickly as possible. Um, Dr. Hastings, if you would work for, and she begins naming off, like I said, there's like five or six other people in the room. Okay. If you could begin working with these individuals, um, it's important that we get the sequencing accurate. Um, based on some things, I want so-and-so and so-and-so to begin looking for these areas. And like now with the photos mm-hmm. and with... <laughs> What's going on? Hale has a very targeted approach and knows exactly what she needs to be going for. Uh And now it's all this sort of research group and you all get the sense that they're grad students or something like um, it it, now it it starts flying. It's like a it's like a a CSI montage at this point. (laughs) Oh, and while I'm thinking about it for our secret listener, Vivian, the word of the day is shit weasel. (laughs) Our title track, Mama Told Me Not to Come, composed by friend of the podcast Ian Shannon, with additional vocals by Lucas Patterson and Cody Grady. You can find more of Ian's work at sleepfortheweary.com. Like what you heard? Check out more episodes online at rancorsbrothel.com, YouTube, or anywhere you can download podcasts. Enjoy talking nerdy? Follow the podcast with other listeners on the fans of the Rancors Brothel Facebook page. Most of all, keep circulating the tapes. Much love, everybody. Is, I don't want to see the love